Some people have questions about my previous video, mean reversion speed of Wasichek model, and I want to provide an explanation. And uh, also, I validated this model, and I want to share it with you here. First of all, if we check what is Wasichek model, basically. It's saying this is type of one factor short rate model, and it describes the interest rate movement. And if we check the Wasichek formula posted on Investopedia, we can see the interest rate change. Here, the d is the derivative of the variable following it, so this is means interest rate change. And it's driven by two items. The first item is saying there is a long-term level of the mean, which is described by B. And another factor is the speed of the reversion to the mean. So the first item is saying if the current interest rate is higher than the long-term mean, uh, the interest rate will have uh, downward pressure. And if the interest rate is lower than the long-term mean, it will have upward pressure. The second item is saying, OK, this is follows a Wiener process, and the WT is a random market risk, and the sigma is a volatility at time t. So if we know all those three factors, A and B and sigma, we can use this formula to forecast the interest rate move. Now the question comes to how do we decide the parameter A and B and sigma? In order to estimate long-term mean B, mean reverting speed A, and the volatility sigma, we will use historical interest rate. I went to this website, and I downloaded US Treasury bill yield for about 10 years. And in column D, I calculated the actual interest rate change. This is monthly data. So this change means change from current month to the previous month. And in column E, we calculate the interest rate change based on our model. This is the first item in our formula. And then in column F, we will calculate the difference between the actual interest rate change and the change based on our model. Then we assume the difference of the actual interest rate change and model interest rate change. It follow normal distribution. And in column H, we put probability distribution function here. And in the next column, we take log with that. And then we sum the log PDF up to get this number. And we will try to maximize this value. This is the page for normal distribution on Wikipedia. What we are trying to do is saying, OK, the difference between the actual interest rate change and the model interest rate change should be zero. And we want to maximize the distribution around this spot. That means we want to see the actual interest rate change is identical with our model interest rate change. So we go back here. We will use the Excel function. If we click data, solver, we will try to 
maximize this number by changing value of a and b and the sigma. So if we click solve, we just keep the solver solution, click OK. We can get the result. In my previous video, we noticed that this is zero and I provided the explanation and if we check the interest rate on a graph we can see for the last 10 years the interest rate started with very low value this is about 0.2 percent and uh, gradually increase and uh, from this graph you can see there is no reversion pattern in the graph. So that's why the mean reverting speed is zero. And after that, I check this model with the data from 1934 to 2019. This is about like 85 years. And uh, we want to do the same thing. If we click this sum of the log PDF, we go to data, solver, and then we will try to maximize this sum by changing parameter A and B and sigma. Click solve. and click OK to keep the solver solution. Now we can see the mean reverting speed is about 0 0.00696. And if we draw a graph, so over 85 years, you can see some reversion pattern here but in order to predict future market interest rate movement it's not that useful because the period is too long and then I did another test this use interest rate data about four months and we want to try the same thing if we go to data solver and we try to maximize this is sum or log pdf by changing all those three parameters we'll click solve and then we keep solver solution click ok Now we can see the mean reverting speed is about 0 0.33. And from the graph, you can see over these four months, there seems a long-term mean here. And also, the interest rate movement is reverting to the long-term mean. So from these three results, the first one is for the last 10 years. We can't see any reversion pattern here. And the second one is over 85 years. We can see some of the reversion pattern, but a very long period of time. And for this four months, we can see a reverting pattern clearly for the short period.
From these results, we can see if we want to estimate the parameters with historical interest rate and use that to forecast interest rate movement. It's better to use interest rate change with high frequency, like daily, not monthly. And also, when we forecast interest rate movement, it's better to forecast near-term interest rate, not long-term. Please provide your comments below and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.